I will tell you a great set of street and everyday photography camera settings. It will make your photography so much easier. Hi, it's Peter here. The most essential things in street photography are curiosity and being alert. And if your camera settings are ready for you, you can concentrate on both of this 100%. No need to worry about the settings. The first setting is the pre-manual focus. Set the focus distance to about 4 meters. Choose pre-MF for the focusing method. And you can set the pre-MF inside the menu, of course. The camera will automatically focus that distance when you turn the camera on. You do not need to focus at all. But of course, that will require enough depth of field for everything to be sharp. An aperture of something like f5.6 or f8 will be needed. The second setting is to set the aperture to either one of these. If you use f5.6, this will give you a depth of field with 17mm lens from 1.9 meters to infinity. And with f8 from 1.5 meters to infinity. A 20mm lens will give you 1 meter 82 centimeters to infinity with f8. With these two settings, especially with f8, you can practically do not need to focus at all. Everything will be in focus. The numbers are for micro four third cameras. With bigger sensors, the depth of field is a lot less. For example, the same values with so-called full frame give you a depth of field from 2 meters to 16 meters when a 35 millimeter lens is stopped down to f8. The focusing distance was 4 meters in all examples. Before I get into the third setting, here are a few words about why shallow depth of field might not be desirable in street photography. In most cases, we want to show the surroundings in street photography, a shallow depth of field will hide it. The whole point of street photography, especially the classical version of it, is to show the surroundings. Of course, it does not mean everything must be sharp from 2 to infinity, but hiding the surroundings will not be pleasing when, this, when uh, making street photography. Look at classical street photography or documentary photography or photographers. There are very few that rely on shallow depth of field. Not relying on shallow depth of field makes making the composition harder. You cannot just hide things by opening the aperture and throw it out of focus. You need to think about the composition and light. Those are the only things you can use. Making the composition so that the main subject is the hero of the shot by using light and shadows only is not easy. It requires good eye for light. A little break before we continue to the topic. If you're interested in spending a week with me and Matti here in Helsinki doing a workshop, a photographic workshop which lasts for a whole week and the thing is all about storytelling with your images. If you're interested in that, check the link down below and sign up. But now back to the studio and to the topic of this video. The third setting is the ISO. It is perfectly okay to set the ISO manually to the value you want, but for this set of settings, I recommend Auto ISO. In some Olympus and OM system cameras, Auto ISO can be set so that it starts to rise the ISO only if the shutter speed goes over a specific value. I have set it to 1 20th of a second. If there is enough light and the shutter speed is faster than 120, uh, 120 of a second, camera will be used the base ISO, ISO 200. When it gets darker and the shutter speed needs to be faster, camera starts to raise the ISO. And the shutter speed won't go slower than 1 20th of a second or whatever you set it. Of course, if you have it 1 20th of a second, the problem might be that you will get a lot of motion blur or, yeah, motion blur. But if you want to freeze the action, set the shutter speed a lot faster. In practice, the camera will never go slower than the speed you set. The camera will raise the ISO instead. You can also set the lower and upper limits for ISO. I have used the defaults so that the upper limit is uh, 6400 and the lower is 200. I think that's the maximum ISO for OM5. I can get excellent results with noise reduction. I use mainly DxO Puro 2 for that. By the way, they currently have a good deal on that software. I think these settings are ideal settings for street photography. I have stored them in OI Share app. I have stored all the basic settings and only the street photography settings as their own. If I have played around with the settings, I can always load them from my phone when I'm out there shooting. It's very handy. I hope that these settings are 
helpful for you, at least for me, when I actually started to think about how I can use pre-MF and the auto ISO and the aperture together to make street photography and the focusing and everything so easy. And if you do exposure compensation, the good thing is that it will first affect the shutter speed. And after that, if the shutter speed is the maximum or the slowest you have set it from the menu, it will start to rise the ISO. And I have set the exposure compensation on the back wheel. So very handy way of making images on the street. And of course, this can up to be applied to any photography. Like I said, it works on every, everyday photography, documentary, or whatever you do, where you do not want to uh, fiddle around with the camera, but you want to concentrate on the composition and, and the things that happen. And here is a video about OM5, and the other one is about DuXO software that I already mentioned. But hey, thanks for watching, and bye for now.